Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Rudy Omar Bueno de Faria. I'm the representative of the World Council of Churches to the United Nations in New York. And uh, before that, I was working with the Lutheran World Federation, Department for World Service, for about 17 years in different positions, different countries, being the last position I occupied as a global program coordinator in the Department for World Service. It's a pleasure for me to be attending this virtual conference, especially because of the topic, transformational diaconia. And that is an area that I'm very much interested in, and I believe that is crucial for the work of the churches and ecumenical organizations worldwide. Today, my role will be share with you some thoughts on the prophetic elements of advocacy, and I would like to engage in consultation with you um, in the next minutes. Uh, we probably saw the concept of diaconia in the different papers that were sent to the participants of this virtual conference, and also they are available at the web page. But I would like just to share some of my own interpretation in terms of uh, diaconia. Basically, it's the services provided to the people in need, the weak, the oppressed, uh, without any vested interest. You are doing that motivated by the love we have in Jesus Christ. And as church and church-related organizations and people of faith as members of the churches and uh, ecumenical organizations, uh, we may be involved in different kinds of actions and diaconal work. And they are different. They have different levels, different layers. But there is one thing that we are doing with the same purpose. That is for the providing support to the people in need, for those who are marginalized and excluded from society. And also there is one thing that's common for independently of the type of diaconal work we are doing as churches, is our motivation. And this motivation is based on Jesus Christ's laws and uh, example. When you talk about uh, prophetic diaconia, you are talking about transformation. Transformation from an unjust situation to one that is based on dignity and justice. But that also implies to become engaged in advocacy. That implies also to become involved in policy development, policy change, and also uh, decision-making processes. That is the God's transformation power that is envisioned in this process. But when you talk about prophetic diaconia, what exactly that means to the people that you are working on a daily basis? The poorest, the homeless, uh, the landless, what is exactly the implication for that? First of all, we need to understand that advocacy is intrinsically uh, related to the prophetic voice of the churches. And this voice has two major dimensions, the dimension of announcement, but also the denouncement. That means that you need to denounce the injustices that you are seeing and perceiving on a daily basis, but also to announce the good news. The good news meaning the way forward, the world that you want to have in the future. And. Uh, when you carry out our diaconal work, providing in different types, and if you take advantage to raise the voice of the people, the, of the marginalized, and also uh, to stand in solidarity with them, then you are talking on prophetic diaconia, because you are looking for a solution, a permanent and lasting solution for the injustice that they are suffering. In the church cycles, uh, advocacy is also known as uh, public witness. And the public witness is about the same. You are talking about the prophetic voice that is interconnected with the uh, announcement and denouncement of injustice. Uh, but how we can engage church leaders, groups, especially uh, groups from the churches, women groups, youth groups, in uh, responding uh, to the God's call uh, to be agents of transformations in the world today? That is one of the questions that you would like to try to 
respond and answered in the, in the, during the, the whole virtual conference. Well, effective advocacy is a key tool for promoting prophetic diaconia. The world today is much more complex. Everyday people, the churches, the society is facing new challenges that were not there before, some years back. And we need to face these challenges and we need to respond to them. And uh, that's required in these complex situations to respond from a prophetic perspective. And how you do that? By addressing change at the political and system levels, rather than by treating symptoms of the social problems, advocacy work has the potential to affect many more lives than directly diaconal uh, service alone. Maybe that's a very strong statement, but we need to take that into consideration. The type of support that we are providing to the people, if this is a form of individual support, very specific and punctual, comparing with the policy change that you can make and the impact that these policies can have on the life of the people. I do not want to say that you should not be involved in directly diaconal support to the people, but we need to make the interconnection with policy change and also the prophetic dimension of the, our work. In the, in the context of the prophetic diaconia, we must consider to address the causes and consequences of the uh, injustices and the uh, exclusion in our societies. The churches had a strong and effective public voice in promoting justice and peace. That you know by history. The role of religion nowadays is becoming much more relevant than before. Never before the societies are relating to religions, for the good and for the worst. But you need to take that into account. Therefore, it's important to accompany the churches to be able to play a meaningful role in advocacy work. That implies to engage in critical social analysis and theological reflections on the issues that you are dealing as uh, churches. And uh, to have a reflection on advocacy itself, what that means in the context of the churches, to have uh, discussions about human dignity, about human rights, democracy, economic, uh, ecological, gender and social justice, for instance. What that implies for the churches and for uh, ourselves as human beings. Churches are capable of incomparable social mobilizations, not to mention uh, some forms of moral standing they have on several issues, on the issues that you are talking about. And uh, without talking uh, also about the capacity of the churches to mobilize volunteers to become involved in the diaconal work, especially in the prophetic diaconal work of the church. Churches have a crucial play to bring about positive and lasting uh, change in the structures that are unjust to the systems and policies that are affecting the life of the thousands and millions of people and bringing them to poverty and uh, under injustice systems. Therefore, collaboration and coordination is a crucial element for ensuring consistency in the diaconal work of the churches and also the advocacy work they are uh, engaged uh, with. But I would like to focus now in terms of advocacy should focus on uh, basically three elements that I would like to share with you. First of all, to identify relevant policies, uh, laws and regulations related to the issues that we have mentioned before, to the social, economic and cultural issues, and also to do a mapping of the relations of powers and also the decision making in terms of uh, and how this uh, relates to the, to the life of people. And also we need to consider the options for policy change. What you need to do in terms of ensuring that people will be a better life based on justice and uh, human dignity. And allies and partners are crucial for this uh, type of intervention that we will do as uh, churches and church-related organizations and as, as people of God. Uh, there are also some advocacy actions that you may be engaged as churches and um, one of them could be 
policy dialogue, for instance, uh, to incorporate the, our commitments, our principles, Christian principles, in the policies, to, to have this understanding what that means uh, for dignity of the people, how these policies and regulations and, and laws are affecting the life of people, how you can incorporate some of the principles that you believe uh, in this, into this policy. And the second element is policy monitoring and also public uh, accountability. We know that many declarations policies are available, but implementation is a big problem. Nobody is implementing that. So that is a role for the churches as well, and for the advocacy role, uh, role of the churches. Uh, other element is also campaign for public change. Uh, some of the policies are already there, they are uh, being implemented, but that doesn't mean that they are just that they are dignifying people. So a uh, campaign for policy change is also one of the elements that churches could be involved with. That is uh, changing policies uh, for better. Uh, also to uh, uh, increasing or to building the capacity of advocacy work of church leaders, church groups, especially women and uh, youth that play an important role in advocacy, in advocacy uh, work and also to work on case studies, especially to be uh, like a demonstrator project uh, with the purpose of influence, influencing the decision makers. And the narrative of people is the most important thing to change policy. By experiencing my, myself, I have been involved in processes at the UN where it's much easier to bring the narrative of people to see exactly what a policy, how a policy can affect them. So that is very important to take into uh, consideration. But there are so also some key elements for advocacy. And uh, uh, in terms of the advo advocacy work that you need to do, uh, one is the permanent consultations with the strategic partners. Uh, that includes the specialized ministries, the National Council of Churches, the regional ecumenical organizations, uh, the civil society organizations, uh, government in some cases, and also other faith uh, leaders in terms of uh, working together with elements that we have in common. The second element is coordination and collaboration at all levels, at community level, national level, regional level, global level, using the structures and the different organizations and institutions available for that. And you need to create some credibility based on the actions that you are doing. So as churches, we have also the moral obligation to show uh, how you are working, how you would like that the work, uh, the world will uh, work as well. And another important element, as churches, you should be intentional in achieving results. When you talk about advocacy, uh, everybody thinks that uh, that could be everything, any action that you do, it's important. Maybe it is, but you need to be intentional in terms of the uh, results that you want to obtain with each one of the actions that you are taking as churches. And uh, some of the strategies to achieve the objectives that we have designed as churches uh, for the advocacy work and the prophetic diaconal work, we need to articulate the links between advocacy goals in our plans, in our uh, uh, rhetoric, and the doctrines of Christian faith, because we need to base our actions on clear uh, and specific objects that we have. Another strategy is to, uh, to root advocacy actions in the realities of the communities. We cannot just come up with issues that we believe that are important because we have some kind of expertise or because we heard somewhere. We need to be consistent, consistent with the work that we are doing with the communities, with the people on the ground, and then what is the reality they are uh, facing. And it's uh, very important as churches to come with a common voice not fragmented one with different positions. That's important as well. Another element is to mobilize churches, ecumenical parties, civil society organizations to work together and to bring leaders, church leaders, but also not forgetting that the church is not only leaders. We have many people, many groups, women, youth, uh, elderly people working in the churches that they have an important role to play in advocacy work and the prophetic uh, diaconal work of the church as well. And you need to take advantage of this uh, potential that exists in the churches. Uh, 
Um, some considerations for the advocacy work in, with a prophetic perspective. Um, we need also to uh, bring another important consideration to take into account is the different levels and layers in terms of advocacy work. We need to consider that an effective uh, advocacy work uh, happens when you are connecting the uh, community level with the national, with the regional, and then with the global levels. Uh, there are many options to do that, and, but it's important to take into account that it, it will be much more effective that at a community level we have a specific role to play as churches, using the congregations and the people, the groups, but at national level before our government, regional levels using specific situations and using the National Council of Churches or the regional uh, organizations, ecumenic organizations to play this role, but also to connect with the global communions of churches like the World Council of Churches, the Lutheran World Federation and others uh, in terms of uh, bringing that voice from the people to the biggest sphere at the global level, to the decision makers. And another consideration is we need to accompany the churches and the community organizations um, in advocacy on the specific uh, actions uh, to meet agreed goals that we may have as a global communion. Uh, and also convene representative groups to provide guidance and build capacity uh, for, uh, for national and international uh, uh, advocacy. Also, uh, coordinate effectively the church advocacy towards the local and national governments and other elements. We can also develop the relations and interactions with uh, a broader array of actors that sometimes you are not considering, we do not see them, but there is a lot of common issues that you could be working together. One important thing is related to the advocacy strategy. All churches should have advocacy plans, if possible in terms to, to be able to organize the advocacy actions uh, leading to uh, prophetic diaphony. Uh, it's important for the churches to have this plan. It's important to def define clearly the target audience for the uh, advocacy campaigns or advocacy actions that we will take. We need to identify the allies and also the op opponents to our proposals or to the issues that you are dealing with. We need to define actions and activities, tactics and negotiations to take in place. You need to define as well expected outcome for each one of the actions. We need to get the message across. We need to have a specific strategy how we will uh, put our message uh, forward. Uh, we need to define clear timely, uh, timeline and who is responsible for each action in the organization. That will be then uh, oriented to have uh, intentionally uh, uh, some results in our advocacy work. That's crucial. And I would like just to finish here thanking you very much for this opportunity to be sharing with you. I know that the time is not enough, but my a lot of uh, uh, colleagues and other people will be addressing very specifically and also uh, from a concrete, concrete ex uh, perspective uh, how advocacy can be done from a different level.